Good morning, everybody. This is Michelle with Creative Operation. Welcome to week 10 of hashtag Sandy's 13 Frights Before Halloween 2022. I have a fun tutorial for you on making this card. It is amazing and it's cute and it has lots of different things you can do with it. This is going to be kind of a two for tutorial because I'm also going to show you how to make these very cute little brooms. I've been playing with making these. Um, so we'll go through that. I used one on the cover of the card. So that's why I thought, well, I'm going to show you how to make those as well. So what we're going to be making today is called an oyster card. And I got this idea from the fold factory. And um, that is a great place where if you're into you know like advertising and stuff like that they they kind of focus on advertising and brochures and mailers and things like that they come up with some really cool ideas and I've gotten a few ideas from them to make you know cards and things like that um so they had this oyster fold that I wanted to kind of play with and it kind of reminds me of an explosion board so you guys know that I'm totally like into explosion boards but um, I made this cute little card it is very um, dimensional it has pullouts that you could do this particular size is uh, four by four uh, you could use this mail it um, give it to somebody and you could like put gift cards in here so this would be a great way to give a present um, it's just really super cute and it's actually quite fun and easy. So you can make it as complicated or as easy as you want. Um, as far as it, that goes, um, this one here, I used cardstock to make it and then I covered it with pattern paper. So it got a little bit more fussy, but if you use pattern paper, it'll be a lot easier. So you can do these really, really quick. So I'm going to show you how to do it with a pattern paper. I'm going to kind of give you some, um, information here and in the description about if you wanted to use cardstock and then cover it with pattern paper, um, you could totally do that. So for this example, I'm using Park Lane um, cardstock. Pattern paper is by Echo Park and it's called uh, Arsenic and Lace. And it was done in 2014. So I used the paper and the stickers from that collection. I also used a little bit of Chillingsworth Manor, a six by six paper pad from Echo Park that I thought matched the collection as well. And then made my own broom, and I'll show you how to do that. And then this is a spider ring that I just cut the spider off and then glued it to the front. Okay, so when we talk about an oyster card, so when you kind of open it up, it kind of looks like an oyster, okay? And what it does is if you keep it kind of folded, it makes these little kind of tuck spots where you can put a little card. And so like for here, for example, I created... Um, a place where you could actually make a gift card holder tag and tuck that in to the pocket, okay? So that's there. That makes three little pockets here. Let me see if I can pull this one out. So this one here um, actually creates a little booklet. So if you untie this, then you have a little booklet so you could write your message or whatever in there. You don't have to put a tie through there if you don't want to, but it's a great way to have it so you could pull it out of the pocket. And then on the last one here, another uh, gift card. I'm going to show you how to do that. So very cute, very fun to make, and um, very, very <clears throat> interesting to look at too. And then you can also open it completely up and then you can decorate on the inside if you want to. Um, if you don't, then if you use pattern paper, then you don't have to do all of the, the different um, pieces, but I'm gonna tell you how to cut all these. So don't worry, I will let you know that. Okay, and then it just folds up and like so, and the top folds fold into the bottom folds and then it just closes up like that so super cute and then you can put your tags in here in the little pocket areas and I will tie that one back together whoops back together later and voila you have this really cute oyster fold card so let's get to the tutorial uh, put my witch brooms aside for just a second so I'm going to show you on this and then we're going to do it with pattern paper okay um because i thought it would be easier tutorial wise to show you and then um we'll i'll give you dimensions and stuff so you're going to have your um piece of cardstock 
or pattern paper, okay? Grab your bone folder. And the first thing we're going to do, put it in your scoreboard. And um, it's 12 by eight. Score at four and at eight. And then turn it and score on the eight at four, okay? Super easy. And then what you're gonna do is fold it in half. And then what we're going to do is score both sides diagonally. So what I ended up doing was just, um, if you have a score here and the point, you just match the point and that corner of the score after you fold it and you just score down that line. Now I did it a couple times because you're going through a double thickness. <coughs> Excuse me. I am fighting a cold. Ugh. And I think my medicine is wearing out. And then just turn it over and do it again. So you're going to do that on both sides, okay? And score nice um, and a couple times and do it on both sides, okay? So you'll have your score lines corner to the fold, okay? Corner to the fold, just like so, okay? And then what we're going to do is we're going to open it up and on one end only, we're going to put it in our scoreboard and at the two inch mark, you're going to score down, but you're only going to score to the diagonal. Okay. So we'll do that. Okay. And then if you follow it all the way down or however you want to do this, you can turn it over, but you're going to score at two inches to that diagonal score. Okay. And then turn it and again score at the two inch line and then here at the six inch line just to that diagonal so you're going to have a score that makes a square here and a score that makes a square here okay does that make perfect sense i hope so i'll show it to you again when we're going to use our pattern paper this particular score is going to be the bottom of your oyster card okay um when you look at this the top will only have the two the bottom will have the four, okay? So where you have your four little two inch kind of spaces here, that's gonna be the bottom of your card. And then to fold it, we're going to fold this down. This is gonna go like so, okay? So the top folds in like that, okay? The bottom will also do that, but then what you're gonna do is you're gonna pop, so you're gonna fold it just like that okay so the bottom folds up like that as well but then you're gonna pop these two down okay just like so okay and then go ahead and fold you know your things and burnish well so you end up with a fold that looks like that okay does that make sense so then these two corners will fit in these two corners when you close up your card like so, and then boom, there it is, okay? So let's go through this again. We're gonna use my pattern paper here. Now, when you use pattern paper, the thing to remember with this is that you need to make sure that one side is not directional. That'll be the outside of your card because once you fold it, um, you know, it's some images could be upside down, so you don't want that. And then also, when you unfold it, if you have your pattern paper, then everything will be right side up, okay? So <clears throat> we're going to grab our paper here and on the wrong side or on the wrong side, on the outside. So your non-directional side, of course you could use both sides non-directional, but we're going to do a four and eight. And this is on the 12 inch. So again, this paper is 12 by eight. You're going to turn it eight at the top. You're going to score it four. All right. Like so. And then fold it in half on the eight. Okay, so now you have a, a piece that's folded that is a four by 12, okay? And then you're going to, and this is gonna be a little harder to see, so I'm going to just kind of fold that so I can see it a little bit better. I'm gonna line up that score line here with the corner, in the outer corners, the open edge, is at the top, okay? And that's important to do too, so you have it in the proper direction, okay? All right, 
I'm being a little careful with this pattern paper just because it's a little older. Um, and I've had it in my stash for a really long time. So I'm just trying to be careful. I'm not going to, I'm not being too crazy with the first scoring. I'm just kind of going over it a couple times. Hopefully not. I don't want to rip my paper. That's for sure. So again, open side at the top. I'm going to make sure where my score line is. Put that on my line. This is why I have a red line down the six inch line on my board so that when I'm doing a diagonal like this, I can see where to line up my points. Like so, okay? All right, so now I should have my scores here, okay? So when I fold this up, if I fold the top down and then I can fold the triangles in, okay and then again tuck that in like so okay so you have something like that now that's going to be the top of our card the bottom of our card we're going to do the same thing but we have to add those extra scores so that they go the other direction right so at the two inch marks so we're going to put it in our scoreboard and there's my score line right there i'm just going to score at the two inch mark just down to the score. Don't go past the score, okay? And then what you can do is turn it and do it again at the top. So score two inch to the score line, okay? And then go over here, eight. So the two inch line would be at the six, right? And then go down to the score. And then you can turn it again if you want to do that. And then you're going to need to do that other corner. So this is only at the bottom. So go to the 10 inch mark and do that. So however is comfy for you to get those two inch marks that's what you're going to need to do i don't know if it's it's not really easy to see but there's two inch marks this is the bottom of our paper so now i have made those two inch marks or scores on the bottom okay so then we're going to fold this guy up just like we did okay we're going to fold up our corners like so okay and it should just kind of fall into place for you but then we got to pop those corners out so those are going to just go like that okay like so okay so again we're just going to pop that out like so <clears throat> and there you go so now you have your top that will fit into the bottom and then go like that so there you go so that's how you fold this and then now it's just a matter of decorating making your tags to put inside so this is a four by four card um and it makes three pockets okay um let me show you so if you use your pattern paper, you're basically done and you don't have to do any further decorating. Now, when you use cardstock and then have to add pattern paper on top, it's going to make it much thicker. You can see how much thicker it's going to be. Um, so that is something to consider. So you can do it either way. If you're going to cover all of these things, so there was a couple things I was going to tell you about that. So in order to cover the squares, so these squares here um, inside and out, you will cut pattern paper that is three and three quarters by three and three quarters. The triangles at the top here, the big triangles, you will cut a square that's three and three quarters by three and three quarters and then just cut them in um, a diagonal and then that's how you'll cover those two papers. Now the, oops, I'm dropping my stuff. My, um, excuse me for just a second, I just dropped it. <laughs> the smaller triangles down here, okay, if you want to cover those, they are um, one and three quarters by one and three quarters, and then just cut it in the diagonal, and then I'll give you the two mats for this, okay? So if you open up this card, let me take these tags out, okay? So I'm talking about these triangles here. So a square that's one and three quarters by one and three quarters, and then just cut it in the diagonal, and that'll map that. 
three and three quarters by three and three quarters and these two three and three quarters by three and three quarters and you just cut them in the diagonal and then I just altered them um, I cut two squares and then just cut them and then you know put them in an arrangement that I liked now we got to cover these pieces here so <clears throat> for that to cut that cut a piece of paper that's one and three quarters and the total length of this is five and a half okay so one and three quarters by five and a half and then make a pencil mark so on the top measure in one and seven eighths and make a tick mark and then measure one and seven eighths inch from the other side down here at the bottom and make a tick mark and then draw a line and then that's where you're going to cut it and then that will so if you have your pieces like this that will give you pieces to cover those particular squares okay so that's all you have to do for that um just um watch the direction of your pattern paper so that when you put them down you know they go the correct way and that's you know um, if you want to use cardstock and then cover it with pattern paper, it does make it nice and sturdy. Now, I didn't cover the outside portion here. I only covered the inside because it's kind of the bottom of the card, and it didn't really show a whole lot, and especially if you open it up all the way um, on the inside. So I did not do that, but you totally could if you wanted to, okay? So that's what you need to do for that. And then, in order to make... Um, these I have my um, we are memory keepers envelope and notcher and I just use that so if you grab <clears throat> a piece of paper a piece of cardstock um, and actually yeah a piece of cardstock and then um, I if you use cardstock and then you cover it with pattern paper I covered it first and then I punched it okay and then um, this measures three and three quarters by three and three quarters. And then I just use my envelope notcher to create the little tabs to put the card in. So it just slides through the tabs. So you can do that or you can use um, some sort of, uh, you know, paper clip or something like that. You can, there's all kinds of different things you could do. But I just wanted to share with you that's how I did that. And then let's talk about our let's see I wanted to show you oh yeah I wanted to show you this so this is another one of the oyster cards that I made and I used the pattern paper on this one so you can see how cute it is and then you just have to add some stickers and you've got this really cute card um, in here I just use cut aparts and put in there in here there's a little booklet and um, that's where I put a sentiment here and you can write what you want on there um, in the middle here and then in the back here, there's another cut apart. <clears throat> so super cute. And then this one, because it's patterned paper, is pretty flat. So I made a flat um, envelope to go with that. So for this um, flat card, I used a seven by seven piece of paper and started scoring at three and a half, okay? Uh, for the thicker card, because it requires kind of a box, more of a box envelope. Is that the right one? No, this is the right one. This one fit better. Um, I made a box envelope. So um, for a four by four card, seven by seven, start scoring at three and a half and then use the box um, score lines on your scoreboard to make the box envelope. And it works very nicely to fit your card, okay? I'll pop that in there and show you. So it works out pretty good. Um, then the next thing I want to show you is how to make your broom. So <clears throat> I was at Joann's not too long ago. And they had these candy apple sticks that look like sticks. And I saw them and, I, you know, I don't make candy apples. But I actually do think that they look like broom handles. So I wanted to make my own brooms. This is not a new idea. Um, but I've seen people use straws or dowels or, you know, all kinds of various things. But when I saw these candy apple sticks that looked like sticks, had to do it. So I thought I'd show you how to do it. So basically, this is a lunch sack. Um, very, it's pretty thin. And then I took one of the sticks because for this particular card, where did I put my card? Um, for this particular card, it was a little bit big. So I cut it in half. Okay. So 
that is a whole like candy apple stick right there. Okay. So I just cut it in half, but this one is a whole one and they're made exactly the same way. So I'm going to show you how I did that. And it's really super simple. So you can either use a fringe, um, <clears throat> scissor, or you can use, you know, regular scissors and just cut it, but it's super simple, um, easy to do. So I just cut a piece of my paper bag and this is a lunch sack again. This is about four by five, roughly. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's a broom. You don't want it like too super perfect. And then I'm just gonna take my scissors and I'm gonna just cut this up. And you know what else I'm gonna do real quick? Um, this is what I did so that I knew how far to go. I'm gonna put a piece of score tape here, <clears throat> just like that. And then you're just gonna cut up to the score tape. All right, so I'm just gonna, and it doesn't have to be like super perfect, okay? This is just supposed to be fun and super easy and quick. So if you're using regular scissors, just every eighth of an inch or so. And so then you have your fringe. See how easy that is and it's double layered, okay? And then I'm just gonna take this and I'm gonna put the cut end here because I want to cover that up and then you're just going to wrap it around and that's all we're going to do. Um, just wrap it around. Candy apple sticks. I mean, seriously, and they were super cheap and Joann's is having, you know, their sales so you can get them for like 40% off. And I think I got, uh, 12 sticks. The package was six bucks but then I got it like 40% off. So, I mean, they were super simple. And if you're going to make short brooms, you can make a ton of them. And there's that. And then you just grab a piece of ribbon. Okay. That's it. And just grab a piece of ribbon and tie it around and boom, you're done. And you got a broom embellishment, which I think is absolutely adorable. And that's what I used for the front of my card because, you know, I had this witch sticker on here. So that is my tutorial for my oyster card. And this is a project for Sandy's 13 Frights before Halloween. And I just think this is a really fun card. So I hope you enjoyed it too. Um, let me know if you have any questions, have fun with it, and I will see you again soon with more tutorials. Stay scary, my friends. Bye-bye.